Welcome back, everybody, to the Birdies and Bourbon Show. We're going to see the bright lights of Memphis this week. Dan, you looking forward to it? Man, I am stoked for this week. This is a packed field. We're going to have so much fun watching this. Uh, we're going to get into some picks later, and they aren't necessarily the ones you thought we'd be picking, especially on Cal's side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pat Reed may or may not be in my lineup, but more importantly... Uh, outside of our picks, we'll drop a little course review on you, and uh, we got some current events we're going to kind of lay out there, too, talk about what's going on in the golf world. Uh, no, Tiger Woods is still not making it to the tournament. Yeah. We will see him at the next major. Uh, however, if you like what we're saying, or if you don't like what we're saying, leave some comments, DM us. We would love to hear from you. We've met some great people in this golf community so far, uh, been out to play a few rounds with them. We're up for it that for sure reach out for us dm us we'd love to hear from you absolutely guys like subscribe and we'll uh here we go here we go here comes memphis welcome back everybody to the birdies and bourbon show dan yes guess sir how, guess how many people you got making the cut line this week i got six of six <laughs> <laughs> me too buddy me too hey this will be uh this is the first uh first successful pick of the year everybody's making the cut <laughs> I actually did have, um, uh, I think I played three lineups last week. I had two of them make it. Um, oh, my God. My, no, my, two of, I made money on two. I made money on two. Yeah, yeah well, I made money on Sunday. I, I did the Sunday pick, and I made. I think I made like 15 bucks on that one. Mm. But, um, but our main lineups that I posted uh, on Instagram, yeah. I had two freaking people make it to the weekend. Count them. Two. Golly. Well, well, this this is this is a pod about taking picks. So I feel better this week. Oh, I feel better this week. <laughs> I will assure you, all six of my picks are gonna make it to the week. Well, I shouldn't say that because uh, you know I I got somebody in there, and hey, listen, hey, it it w wouldn't be surprised if he withdraws after Thursday. Nah, it, nah, hey, you know, it, he'll be, he'll overall be we, yeah, overall we do really good in the picks, is in uh, and. Uh, yeah, last week was a fluke, man. I think I heard like I think it was less than ten percent actually had like six of six through last week oh, or something. It, it was crazy. I mean, who? I, I'd like to know who actually picked Michael Thompson. Good golfer, don't get me wrong, but I mean, there were so many other players out there that I, I you know, he wasn't even on my radar. Warinsky, I mean, rightfully so, he kind of tanked there, you know, in the end. So you know, that, that's whatever. But uh, but if somebody had Michael Thompson in their lineup. Uh, going into Thursday. Yeah. Uh, hey, s send us a message. I want to know how in the hell you picked that one. Well, what <laughs> what book are you reading that you stuck that one in the lineup? But uh, exactly. but congratulations if you did. Exactly. Yeah, that no, was awesome. Um, hey man, let's uh, let's head to Memphis. So uh, so we got the 2020 WGC FedEx St Jude Invitational Field. Whew, boy, that is a mouthful, buddy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, one too many bourbons and that'll never come out. That's for sure. Um. So we got 78 players heading to Memphis. Uh, there are no cuts, so everybody's making it to the weekend. We got a uh, we got a Thursday uh, first tee at uh, 10 a.m. Defending champion Brooks Kepka. Oh, hey, just to make mention, you know, we've got another um, got another charity charity event on Wednesday. So who did I see? We got uh, we got Big Vic and we got Stinson, and they're playing. Uh, shoot. Uh, I didn't see that. Oh yeah, for sure, man. We'll have to uh, we'll, we'll have to plug that one because hey, I'm, and I tell you, man, I am so excited to see these little charity matches. I love these things, and and I really hope that uh, you know when things go back to normal, which they're going to. I mean, you know, no doubt that they'll get there. But um, I'm really excited. I, I hope they keep these things going, man. And and maybe it's not a, a COVID relief, right? Uh, or maybe it is. Maybe they keep it for essential workers. So. Yeah, so we got uh, Brent Snedeker and Billy uh, Billy Ho, and Henrik Stenson, and uh, Victor Hotland. I mean, I think that's going to be a pretty awesome group. I mean, Billy Ho, Brent Snedeker, you know, he's always full of humor. Uh, I don't know Henrik Stenson. He seems a little dry and quiet on the course to me, so I, I don't know what the whole mic'd up experience is going to get you. Uh, I don't think we're going to get any uh, E.M. Poulter farts getting ripped off there, so, <laughs> so we'll see. But again, hey, I, I'm excited for it, man. I, I, really like these, I really like these little events, and you know, it's actually a good way, and, and I'm wondering if this is kind of a – uh, if they parlayed that whole, you know, mic'd up because they didn't get a good response off of that from the players, right, during the actual match. 
So I'm wondering if this is kind of the, hey, get to know the players. Because, I mean, there's no fans or, you know, very limited as far as uh, any activity really, you know, on course. So I hope it sticks even when they do have fans back, man. I think this is a pretty awesome event. I mean, think about it. It's like the Masters, right? I mean, every, you know, on Wednesday, you wind up with a par three tournament. So is there really any difference? I, and it works for Augusta. You know, I mean, it, it, is, it is the Masters. So I think anything that they do would actually work. But uh, but I, I think it's uh, it's working out. Hopefully, we'll get to the point though where we're uh, we're sans commentators. Just hey, and if the if the players aren't talking, so be it. Just let me watch them play, man. Let me watch them play. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, it's great. I'm glad to see that. Absolutely. I just sent you the uh, the featured groups. Uh, they just came out. Oh, so. sweet. All right. Yeah. Let's get so, into the course, though. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let, let's dig in, man. So um, so we've got uh, what do we got? I guess the top seventy eight players are well. Not the top 78. Who's not going to be there? Tiger Woods, Adam Scott, uh, Molinari, Justin Rose, uh, Lee Westwood. So, you know, I, I don't know. It's uh, it's whatever. I mean, there's plenty of people that are going to be there. Some first-timers that we're seeing since uh, the comeback is so Stinson again, Sean Norris, Lucas uh, Herbert, uh, Robert McIntyre. Uh, so those are going to be some first timers that we haven't seen since, uh, since the, uh, since the comeback from COVID. So the, the break. So, uh, we're going to be in Memphis at TPC Southwind, uh, just over 7,200 yards. It is a par 70. So, uh, get into that with one of my picks a little while. I think, uh, I think that's key. Uh, we're back to Bermuda greens again. Uh, and I'm excited, man. So we've got, uh, and your boy, uh, what's the chance we're going to have back to back, uh, championships at uh, at TPC Southwind because Brooke, Brooks Kepka was the winner last year. Yeah, no, that's great. I'm glad to see he uh, he needs a more spotlight on him to defend his title. I think Chase was getting a little bit of the press here in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> and uh, hey, it's Brooks's time to shine. He is definitely in a featured group because he's defending. Uh, missed the cut last week, but uh, this is a different course, and uh, we'll see how he does. He did make the cut over at Memorial. Memorial was a really tough course, so I mean, yeah, we'll see how he does. Uh, yeah, so what do we, it's, uh, the most water balls of any course, uh, is here. Uh, the second most is TPC Sawgrass. So interesting stat here, uh, since 2004, 5,000 balls have found the water. So this is the first course rated. The second is, uh, almost 1500 balls at TPC Sawgrass. So, you know, what are we talking? More than 3,500 more balls in the water since 2004 at this course. So it is going to be crucial, crucial for people to find the fairway here. Uh, and again, it's not terribly long. Uh, once again, we've said it week after week, ball strikers paradise, man. I mean, it is going to be key. Let me go through a list of, uh, uh, of past champions before we get into uh, to our picks. So you got Kepka 2019, DJ 18. Back-to-back -back wins from Daniel Berger, uh, 16 and 17, Fabian Gomez, Ben Crane, Harris English in 23, Dustin Johnson again, 2012. Uh, you got Harrison Frazier, 11, and Lee Westwood in 2010, which is not going to be here this year. So uh, I think one, you know, it's, it's all going to be um, it's all going to be about strokes gained. Uh, off the tee, well, off the tee, and then uh, strokes gained on the approach. I mean, that's kind of where I think we're anchoring at for this one. So, what what, what you got? Well, with this one here, you know, this, the tournament's changed, right? So, the TPC Southwind, the course has gotten harder over the years in terms of course history. Yes, you got your winners there, but since be, since this has become a, a WGC type of event, it's gotten harder from a course perspective. They've changed the grasses out, uh, and if you look at the past winners, I wouldn't say those fields are probably as strong as they are now that it's a WGC. Um, so about you can take into account, right? I mean, Berger's won a couple of times, etc. You can take that into account, but just know the field's stronger now and the course is harder. So um, definitely, the all the eyes will be on this this week going into PGA. I don't think it's going to be kind of a 
practice round like we saw at the uh, the work day. I think they're actually going out there to play and they're going out there to win. Um, so I'm looking forward to it, man. This is going to be a strong field. It's a great event. Uh, it's got uh, it's going to be a lot more uh, nail biting than last week. And there's no cut, which is interesting in terms of how you want to play this from a strategy perspective, both in your DraftKings picks and how or your, your fantasy picks and how the players are going to play it in terms of you know the different rounds. Yeah, for sure. You know, just looking at some of the players, so uh, who John Rahm, Scheffler, Casey, and Hovland are uh, what the past uh, this year, they're both in the top 30 as far as distance and accuracy goes. So we're going to be thin fairways here, uh, not a lot of margin for error. So it's, you know, <clears throat> do the uh, do the DeChambeau's here have a chance? I mean, how could you say that he doesn't have a chance? I think he always does. Uh, we'll look at DJ, right? So talking about power hitters, I mean, that guy's definitely long off the team. And, uh, you know, he's got a couple of wins here. Mm -hmm. Look at uh, it. But then, you know, go back to Berger, right? So you got back to back wins from him. He's not short, but he's, uh, you know, he's definitely not a power hitter. So, yeah, I, mean, I think it's kind of, you know, a little bit back and forth there and kind of what we're going. And then you got Kepka winning last year here. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting. Uh, again, you know, I, I think that this thing is going to favor ball strikers and, you know, who puts well on Bermuda greens. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, – that those are – going to be the two key elements that um, that, that, are, that are going to win the tournament for uh, for whoever it may be. And we haven't played a whole lot of Bermuda lately. It's all been bent grass in the last yeah. couple of tournaments. Like probably the last, what, last four weeks, it's all been bent grass for the most part, right? Right. So. Yeah. So uh, who we got coming into this thing, man? Some uh, We got some people that took a break last week. Uh, so you got uh, you got McElroy, yeah. uh, Webb Simpson, Sun JM, needed a break, right? I'm wondering what's he going to look like coming back because, man, his past – Two tournaments. Uh, I think he missed cuts, right? Uh, at least a past two. Uh, Who did? Uh, Webb? Webb uh, Sanjay, missed. Sanjay, Sanjay. Oh, Sanjay's been terrible. Yeah, he has not bounced <laughs> back from that break, man. He's mm -hmm. still he's still on the COVID break, man. <laughs> we thought, you know, he played at Colonial. Oh, shaking off rust. And then he went to RBC. Played terrible at RBC. But then he played terrible at RBC last year. So we're like, oh, well, maybe that's just because of that. And then it's just never picked up and then it's just yeah. like man when is this guy gonna bounce back in the form we were seeing at the arnold and the honda yeah, i mean come on he's, he can get it you know he can play but he's just not he's not come back from that break he's scary mm -hmm. shoffley has shoffley's going to come back nicely yeah yeah you know the thing with the x-man you know he's having he's got that you know out of, out of the tournaments he's got one round that it just seems to get way away from him just just crazy bad and yeah. but 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 he bounces back from it generally speaking right i mean uh, what a, a couple weeks ago, he had a really crappy Thursday. I, yeah, Thursday uh, makes the cut line on the mark, and then uh, you know he turns it around for a good weekend. I, he was just so far back, you know, he just couldn't get couldn't catch back up. I mean, these people, uh, you know, the the guys that are playing really well consistently. I mean, they're just getting so far ahead, and and nobody's letting off the gas, man. They're they're just you know kind of staying after it. Uh, another interesting guy that I like here uh, that didn't look good at all last week. Hey, thanks, uh, thanks, Paul. Uh, that was one of my four that didn't make the cut, uh, but you know he he didn't look that good last week. And, no, he didn't. But but I, and I I thought he was going to be able to show up and, and play again. Got a little tighter course. Uh, you know it's it's going to be all it's ball placement and uh, you know strokes gained tee to green. So I, I'm looking for looking for Paul to bounce back here, and I'm going to go. He uh, he makes the cut. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, hey man, when is your boy AS coming back? Uh, I don't know, dude. I mean, he's probably, he's down there surfing, fishing, spending time with the family. I, I don't know. Does he come back? I, I mean, I guess he does. I mean, he's still young enough. What is he? Maybe right. Yeah. He's around 40. So he's got plenty of play time left. So I, I don't know, but I haven't heard anything about the dude, man. I have no, no idea. And then we had, uh, Lee Westwood was going to come play and then he withdrew. So, uh, yeah. Don't know what's going on there. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's see. So, uh, one of the featured groups. Uh, yeah, let's go to uh, let's go to featured. All see. right. First one, and they did not do us any favors again. We have no WWE that we were hoping for. It's going to have to be Bryson uh, versus Brooks in December in Florida at Medalist. <laughs> Versus uh, who we say we said the shark and Nick Faldo right oh, that's yeah. what we want yeah. that's what we want mm -hmm. yeah give me that and actually we can you know hey you want to throw Chase in there but Chase play too they can play paired I don't know <laughs> make it more fun right give give it the Brooks the uh, Brooks and Chase versus uh, 
Yeah, Faldo and uh, DeChambeau or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, Brooks, Brooks can drive the buggy around. I mean, I'm sorry, Chase. Chase can drive the buggy. So you, it's like, hey, hey, Chase, here, you're, you're driving today, bud. Here you go. But yeah, they did not do us any favor. So the first uh, first featured group is Bryson DeChambeau, Ricky Fowler, and John Romp. So hold, hold on. Do you think um, do you think Matt Wolf's hurt? You think he's like, wait a minute. Have you mm-hmm. have you seen how many cuts I've made and how many cuts Ricky hasn't? Yeah. Well, like, hey, uh, hey, hey, Matt, you should have signed that Puma deal. I know, I know, right? Um, I can't believe it. Yeah, I mean, Ricky has not been playing that well, but they put him in all these featured groups all the time. Hey, at least he'd be on camera on Thursday and Friday. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, but okay. yeah, I mean, anyway, Deshambo, what do you think? I mean, he had the meltdown two weeks in a row. You said, I mean, I know he had a week off or whatnot, but just in terms of the cameraman and then the meltdown at Jack's place, Jack was sitting. What do you have a comparison for what Jack must have been doing when he was off camera watching these guys trying to play his course? I don't know. He's probably blowing his nose trying to get rid of that COVID. I, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, he's probably over there shaking his head going, what is wrong with that idiot? <laughs> well, you know, he's been picking on the PGA for some time in terms of how they're setting these courses up, letting these guys drive the ball their way they're driving it and how they're setting these courses up, to let them kind of do this non-traditional changing of the game. And he goes, well, Hey, watch this. I got it. I got you. I got you. But then, but he's watching these guys just stumble over themselves at Memorial and he's got to be back there. Just popcorn, just like, smiling. Oh, he's got to be traps laughing. He's, he's got to be yeah. yucking it up, man. Yeah. Yucking it up. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, you, you would think, yeah. So I mean that, I, you know, so, Hey, solid, solid, uh, Feature group number one. I mean, I guess if you want to call Ricky Fowler solid, but yeah. uh, he, he's definitely going to get some TV time. He doesn't have to get up too early. It's a 10 o'clock you know, tee off. So, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, we can put Ricky in the first group. It'll I, be fine. I think they should have put uh, John Rahm with uh, Rory, at least, <clears throat> right? I mean, come on, number one. And what is Rory's number two now in the world? And that thing is not solid in there. I mean, if Rory finishes really, if he won this week, I think he'd be back at number one again. Yeah, so, he, right. He, he would. So, well, th- think about this. You got. You got number four, number eight, and then number eighty-nine. That, that's the ranking. So how, how do you go from? And we'll we'll follow up with the second in a minute. But I, I don't know. I, I haven't read up on this. I don't know how they pick those. Um, how they're picking the feature groups and what the you know what what's what what what's the prerequisite to you know do you Auctions? how do you have to do it? Auctions. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's like, hey, who's buying the put on this one? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. But, I, I, you know, it's like, oh, who, who's the biggest draw? I, I guess. I, I don't know. I mean, I'd like – but I would like to know and understand a little bit more how they're picking these things. I would too. Uh, Because it, it, it doesn't make sense to me. There's plenty of other players out there that make a lot more sense uh, than – I'm not – we're not dogging Ricky, man. We, we like him. No. We, we do – it is uh, – it does make for good enter- – for entertainment value, the exact same reason he's paired – with Bryson and John, it's only entertainment value. Well, here, but here, here's the reason. We, we like Ricky. I love Ricky. I think he's great for the sport. Here's the thing about Ricky, though. When you're not playing and being in the top 10, put some guys up there that are playing and are finishing in the top 10. Yeah, like, yeah. Why, put, put Matt Wolf in there. Why is Matt Wolf not in that spot? Yeah, he, he, he's, he's, he finished second uh, a couple of weeks ago. He had like a top 12. What was he last week? I forget what he was. Last, I think a 12 last week or something like that. Yeah. But he was a defending champion. The guy's been on a hot streak. He's been playing great. Well, give these guys the spotlight. They they're playing well enough to deserve it. Give it to them. I mean, and, and I mean, you know, I'm not a huge Tony Finau fan, but I mean, even so, he's playing damn Tony good Finau. golf right now. So, I mean, what what's going on? You know, what yeah. what's wrong with that? I mean, where's he? What you know, why is that guy not listed? So, yeah. I I don't know. It, it you know, it, it's it's just um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's crazy. Where's Webb Simpson? You know, it's he's, like, he's here. He's in this. He's oh, in he's this. okay. I didn't, yeah, I didn't scroll this. down. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, all right. So let's go to uh, second. Second one is Jordan Spieth, Rory McIlroy, and uh, Webb Simpson. Yeah. There you go. So, here, hey, here again, you got so so it's Simpson, McIlroy, Spieth. You got number two, number five, and ninety one. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's like I don't. I mean, is it like uh, oh oh let let the oh uh, it's like tee ball. Everybody gets a trophy. <laughs> oh oh let let little Jordy let little Jordy play too. It's uh, like I mean, you're looking you're overlooking so many people, man. I I, I don't get it. So uh, so McElroy, no no secret. Uh, I think uh, what I said two weeks ago. I don't think Roy McElroy sees number one again in his career. Um, Speed, um, uh, when's he get a new caddy on the back? Uh, hey, it's like, you know, hey, I can tell you why Finau's not in that group because he's like, hey, 
Michael, Michael, no, you are not. <laughs> no, Michael, no. Quit staring at him, Michael. <laughs> oh. uh, so, you know, I, I, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, his most recent top 10 was at a WGC event. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was at the 2016 FedEx mm. St. Jude mm. Invitational, and it was a T3. Mm. Listen, listen to this. Spieth's most recent top 10 in a WGC was in 2016. Maybe he hadn't played in any since then. I mean, I know that's not the case, but I no. just, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's troublesome, man. Troublesome. Yeah. Uh, so you got McElroy, number five. What's that going to do to his brain, man? I mean, that's got to have him this whack completely out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, you got Simpson. Uh, what is he? Uh, multiple wins this season. So he won uh, won the waste management, and then he won RBC. So. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, that'll be a fun pairing to watch. I mean, both of those pairings, man, are going to be awesome to watch. And I'm not just, we're just kidding around with that stuff, but, but both of those are going to be great. Yeah. I mean, they're They're all great players. So Roy's number two in the world, right? So you're talking, uh, about, you're, you're talking FedEx rankings, I'm FedEx rankings. Yeah. Yeah. First, yeah official yeah. world golf ranking is number two in the world. Yeah. Number two. Yeah, ex- exactly. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, all right. So this next one could be my favorite because we actually might see a fight out of this one. <laughs> we really uh, <laughs> okay. well, I'm just just saying. Uh, so we got Patrick Reed, Vic Hovland, and Brooks Kepka. Mm. Oh yeah, I, I could see uh, I can see Reed and Kepka kind of uh, kind of going at each other. I mean, similar similar demeanors on the golf course. Uh, yeah, I, I could see a little tension kind of swelling up there. So you got P. Reed number six, Hovland at twenty three. Listen to this. Uh, I'm not going to make the FedEx Cup playoffs. One fifty five for Kepka. Well, I guess he'll be at the Wyndham in a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> did, you get, did you get a room yet? I got to get one. <laughs> guess, uh, guess, guess we could take Matt's advice from Sweetens and just sleep in the car. But, uh, but he, he, said that was not, he said that was not very friendly on his back. So I don't know. Uh, drive up and drive back, I guess. Uh, what do you got? So Reed, he actually won this year in Mexico. Um, uh, if the cameras aren't on him, uh, who knows what he might shoot on, uh, you know, going into the weekend. Um who you got Hovland. He's the highest ranked rookie in the FedEx cup standings. And, uh, let's see, Kepka defending his title. So going for back to back wins and, and it can be done. Right. And it's recently shown with, uh, with Berger. So, uh, you know, it w- wouldn't be the first time it's happened this decade. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens there. Yep. And the last group we got Justin Thomas, Colin Kawa and Hideki Matsuyama. Uh, well, that's interesting. That's an interesting group. I like it. I like it. I like all those guys. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, uh, what do you, so you got, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think JT, I like JT here. Uh, Hideki, I don't know, man. He's, that dude's been kind of all over the place. Obviously yeah. Collins played really well. Yeah. Uh, what he should have won at Colonial. And, well, let, let me rephrase that. He could have won at Colonial. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I don't know what we're going to get with Hideki. So, uh, he's, he, he's still something's, uh, something's bothering that dude, but, uh, um, but he's got, uh, he plays well at the WGC event. So, you know, may, maybe, uh, maybe this is what uh, kind of sets him off. So we'll, so, we'll see. So, so if you were to replace some of these people and I, we'll move on to this stuff here in a minute, guys, but we like, we just like talking about this cause we don't understand it. And it's a big deal. Cause this is get, this is who you get to watch on Thursday and Friday with that, uh, that package or whatnot. Right. This is, this is all you're going to see, but well, so why does Daniel Berger play? He's a two-time winner here. I mean, come on, give the guy some respect. It, come on, exactly. And he just won. He's already won this year. He won. He won the Colonial. Come on, I mean, give me a break. A two-time winner, and he won Colonial, which was like five or six events ago. He should be in here, right? Another yeah. guy. What's where's DJ? DJ is a past mm-hmm. winner here. He won recently. I two-time mean, winner. A, two-time. Yeah. Winner. And he won a couple of weeks ago. Why, why are these guys, why are they not getting the respect, right? So why is Ricky Fowler playing over DJ? And why is Jordan Matsuyama, Speed? why is Speed or Matsuyama playing over Daniel Berger here? I don't understand that. Uh, who else are we missing? Uh, uh, well, Scott's not here. So yeah, you see, so you got Cantlay, you got Fleetwood, you got Hatton, yeah. Finau, yeah. Rose. I don't think Rose is here this week, is he? No. Uh, you, you got Woodland, what Matthew Fitzpatrick, yeah, uh, Matt Kuchar, Abe Answer. 
Yeah, so uh, the, hey, the, the tour hey, has hey, got to do a better job than this. They, they are really screwing this up. Yeah. And if they don't get their stuff together, man, they're going to miss some really good guys that are going to become stars. And we're just not going to be able to see them mature like this. I mean, you got to put these guys that are playing well in the future groups. You cannot go off this past history like this. It's not fair to the other guys. Well, interesting enough, you know, we, I, I think we were talking the other night, or maybe I was just talking to myself. A lot of times it's like that on the show. Uh, but. <laughs> you know what's what's going to happen when so when that when Tiger Phil uh, Westwood you know some of the uh, some of the more Webb some of these guys so you know in ten years I mean we're going to have a huge cycle of players that are not they're they're not going to be playing anywhere they're definitely not going to be competing yeah. and and you know I mean so yeah you know, I think they tried to spotlight Matt Wolf a little bit. Uh, I don't know. He so he's playing a little bit recently. I don't know if he's yeah, but I don't don't know if he's definitely done the best job of spotlighting himself. But but you know, so now we're going to be stuck watching you know the D Shambos, and while it's entertaining, it's not necessarily a good image that he's putting out there for people. So you know, what's what's the tour really doing to capture audiences and you know putting Ricky Fowler in the group? I mean, it it's it almost looks a little desperate to me, man. I mean, they're just clinging on, you know. It's yeah. like it's like, oh, well, we don't have anybody else, and nobody's replaced Ricky yet, so we're just going to put Ricky in. We're going to put Jordan in, and it's like, I, okay. I think Ricky has been replaced. He just doesn't know it yet. It's been Victor Hovland. Victor Hovland is now yeah. the highest ranked Oklahoma State University That's grad. True. Yep. Is now Victor Hovland, not Ricky Fowler. He's been replaced. And I said this earlier a couple of weeks ago. I said Ricky Fowler will be desperate to stay in the top forty this year in the official mm-hmm. world golf rankings. He he is this this young group is coming in and he is being swooped out and and just it. it, it, it Stop shooting the commercials, dude, and get on the course and start playing better. That's all I can say. I mean, your, your play hasn't been good, and these young kids are really freaking good, and they're hungry. Maybe, maybe his strategy is I need I need to make hay while the sun is shining because it ain't going to be shining much longer. Yeah, you yeah, know, I'm, yeah. just say it, man. I mean, maybe it's hey, I'm not going to be I'm not going to make any money playing golf, so I might as well capital on it, capitalize on it while I've still got an image out here. So, I love the comment people make on Twitter and all. I think Ricky might win a major this year. I think it's more interesting to see if Ricky plays, places in the top forty this year. Like <laughs> right. Let's, okay. be re- let's be let's realistic. be realistic. Yeah. Yeah. With uh, with with our bets here and and what we're wagering on. Yeah. Unless you just want to give your money away, and I'll take that. I'll take and, it. And all, also, all and I'll say it. I'll say it all day long too. That I am a Ricky Fowler fan. I just think that we need to shine the light. The guys are playing really well. They yeah. deserve the spotlight, man. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You know, I mean, Ricky's going to be all over TV on the commercials all day long. He's got that. But if somebody like a Daniel Berger, who just won six weeks ago and has won this thing twice, why is he not in a featured lineup? I don't get well, it. Well, you know why DJ's not in the featured lineup. I'm sure they went to him and said, hey, DJ, DJ, hey, man, got good news. We got you in the featured lineup. Oh, man. <laughs> no. I, I, I can just see the disappointment on his no. face when they – he's like, what, what, was Ricky not available? <laughs> are you sure it's – it, was it that or is – hey, DJ, are you, do you expect to be here on Friday or not? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I don't think I'm going to make the cut. And they're like, no. No, no, you, no, no, you, no, no, you no, need no. To, not Thursday. Not, 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 not Saturday. Friday. You think you're going to be here Friday? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, DJ. We love, uh, DJ. We love DJ see. too. We, we do, yeah. Man. You we, were just we, in DJ Paradise down there at uh, TPC in uh, oh, Myrtle Beach. T- TPC in Myrtle Beach, yeah, the Dustin Johnson School of Golf. It was, yeah. uh, it was, it was sluggishly there. I loved watching DJ with his most recent man. He was God. That swing is a sweet swing, man. God, when it it's is, on. it so is. Yeah. Just, when, it, when it when it's on, you mean when he missed yeah. the cut or when no. He missed it? Oh, but man, oh God, he was God, he's so good. He's he so did, good. He did not want to be there, dude. I don't even. I, it, it's like R- Ricky probably wishes that he had DJ's talent because oh, yeah. Ricky actually wants to be there. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> get, 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 get Jack Palmer on the phone. We need. We need to find out. Yeah. We need an answer to this. All right, All right man. You want to? Uh, you want to get into these picks? And we're not trying to offend anybody with that. So don't don't write us, please. Yeah, please. don't don't believe it. We're definitely trying to offend you. Write us. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready for the picks. I'm ready for the picks. All right, so let me let me let me tee this up. So let's go first to the um, the ten thousand and eleven thousand dollar range. So here you've got John Rahm, Rory McIlroy, Bryson DeChambeau, Justin Thomas, and Patrick Cantlay. That's your ten thousand dollars and up range. That's uh that's expensive, man. That's really expensive. I'll tell you what. I've been being I've I've gotten burned a lot over the last couple of weeks in picking some of these. These uh, these more expensive guys. I picked Webb Simpson. 
he missed a cut. I picked uh, who else was it? I picked somebody else, and he missed a cut. And it was just they were, oh, Justin Thomas. I picked well, him. Yeah. And he missed the cut. I was like, damn, man, I'm spending all this money, and these guys keep missing the you get, damn getting, cut. Getting nothing. Yeah, nothing. and you got seven. You got seven thousand dollar players that are just lightning and winning. I know. Winning. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So that's your that's your expensive tier. Do you have anybody in that expensive tier, and anybody you like up there? Uh, I do have someone in that tier, and uh, I'm going Rory McIlroy. Oh, you are? Uh, yeah, and I know I made some uh, maybe not so positive comments about him uh, when we were talking about the feature groups, but uh, but I, I but, but I that feel... was yesterday. But that was yesterday. Yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> I, I, I've I've moved on since then, and I've definitely started drinking. So you know, I, I can change my mind if I want to. Uh, you, you know, it's uh, I'm going Rory McIlroy just because, and and I'm still sticking with. I don't think he'll get back to number one, so I'm not picking Rory to win this week. I am picking Rory to play really well, and uh, Rory's averaging, I think he's averaging like 94 points, yeah. So, and I think that a lot of people are going to steer clear of him. Now, yeah. Again, I think he's going to wind up in, in uh, you know, probably low single-digit percentage of rosters. Uh, I'm sorry, double digit, low double okay. digit. Sing- okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think he's going to be like in the low teens uh, mm-hmm. as far as percentage of rosters. So yeah. I think people are going to be leaning more towards the Deshambos and the Roms, uh, you know, just based on their performance and where they are. So I'm, I'm going, I'm spending the money on him. I think he's got something to prove. Uh, not saying that's when he plays his best golf, but, uh, but I think he's going to be able to kind of rein things in here. And again, it's not, of course, it's not that long. And, and he's actually played, you know, pretty good over those past tournaments. I mean, it's, it's not like, Oh shit, he, you know, here's Rory again and he's just stinking it up. He's just not winning. So, so I, I feel pretty good about it. How much is he? Uh, he's uh, 11,200. Okay. Um, I did not pick Rory. Uh, I'm with you that great player. Um, I don't think he's going to be used as much as he had been. Hasn't played that great since the break. But, I mean, losing that title to John Rahm, that guy, I hate to use this quote over and over again, but from Die Hard, that man, it must be pissed. <laughs> right? I mean, he loves be. that number be. one ranking. You, you heard yeah. him over there at that TaylorMade event. Hey, I've won two FedEx Cup guys and everything else. Yeah. Oh, that, that ego is bruised, and uh, he's looking for vengeance. I wish they would have put him with John Rahm in the future groups. Gosh, that would have been good. I mean, once again, you miss Kepka <sighs> and DeChambeau together, and you miss Rory and Rom together. I mean, and, what, they, what, and they, they wouldn't be mouthing at each other. They wouldn't do that. I mean, it'd just be great to watch those guys, number one and number two, play together. I mean, I come know. on. You I know? know, I mean, how do you miss that? I don't know how you miss that. But yeah, that's good. It, it, no. I, I don't know what they're waiting on, though. I mean, are they like, well, let, let's wait until it's a major, and then let's put them together. I mean, it's like, dude. You're the only, I guess baseball's back on now, but I mean, still, it's with the little cutout thing. You know? It's like, what, yeah. are they gonna, what are they going to put cutouts on the golf course? That's what I want to know. <laughs> yeah, so that means they just had the changing of the guards in the number one ranking in the world last week or the week before last. Yeah. And they had these two guys, and they put them in different groups. It's like, come on, put them in the same group. Let them, let them go at it. Let them go. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I want to watch, watch them for Me two too, days. Play. I, want to see that. I want to see that tension. I want to see yeah. that tension. I want, to, I want to see John Ron slam that club down really close to Roy's foot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's your number one pick. Um, and then let's go. I, I did not pick anybody in the upper tier. Okay, and, uh, well, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. And, uh, and, and 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 you'll see. I mean, you'll hey, you, you know, if you're listening, you'll see why. Uh, I mean, there's plenty of plenty of options. Uh, you you do not have to pick someone in that to uh, to make it count. So, um, no. yeah. No, no, absolutely. There's a lot of options. That's why I didn't pick anybody up there. Yeah. Um, okay, so. My first, uh, my first, my highest pick is uh, Terrell Hatton at ninety seven hundred bucks. Shocker, right? Yeah. Mm, yeah, I knew you were going Hatton. I didn't yeah. know Mr. Lambo. Mr. Lambo. Yeah. So Hatton finished forty third here last year. Not a great showing. Uh, but he did shoot an opening round sixty six here last year. And he's a pressure player. Fourth at the Rocket this year. Uh, third at RBC. First at Arnold Palmer. Sixth at WGC Mexico. Fourteenth in the official World Golf Rankings in terms of the PGA Tour this season, he's had I think uh, I think it says seven events. I think it might be a little more than that. But first on tour in putting, second approach, fifth tee to green, and first shots gained total. The man is just he's on he's been on fire. And uh, you know when I went back and looked at him, I thought I saw something I didn't like from him recently. I've been playing him a lot. 
I went back and looked. And I'm like, am I missing something here? Because I thought maybe he didn't miss a cut or something along those lines. But no, he's just been solid, man. I mean, since the return, you got uh, actually since Mexico in his last four starts, sixth, first, third, and fourth. I mean, it's kind of hard mm. to kind of hard to argue with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I can't argue. You think he's uh, has he written a Lambo to uh, <laughs> make it make it to the course? Well, he's probably just driving it up from Florida. <laughs> get, get a little windshield time, hey? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <clears throat> All right, man. So my next guy uh, went um, – uh, so that was my only – Rory's my top-tier guy. Uh, mm-hmm. My next is uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick. Okay. Uh, oh, let me tell you So Terrell Hatton was 9700 bucks. I'm not sure if it's oh, yeah, Sorry. Yep. Okay, so, so now I went Matthew Fitzpatrick. Uh, I mean, dude, dude's on fire, man. I mean, he looked really good. Uh, there's nothing that, uh, no reason not to play him. Uh, he's coming in at $9,000. So yep. again, he is a, you know, 12 or 13 cuts made four top tens. He's averaging, uh, 73 points. And that's, so that's something I really looked at in this was when I was picking my lineups is I, I looked at what their average, uh, points scored were. Yeah. And bec- because again, I mean, that's really the anchor, right? I mean, I took cuts out completely because that doesn't matter. Even top tens doesn't necessarily matter in this point, e- you know, even though that you typically equates to a higher, uh, higher ranking, but, uh, or I'm sorry, higher points. But yeah, I, I, uh, going, uh, going Fitzpatrick there, man. All right, that's good. So it's good. So you should went from two and there to, to nine thousand. My next pick is uh, your boy. I mean, I'm surprised you didn't go for him. You were in love with this guy. He plays like every week, and uh, he's your favorite toy. He's your favorite player on tour these days, and you just skipped over him, Mister Smiley Hovlin. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead, Hovlin. I'm, hey, <laughs> I, I. The only reason is just. Yeah, I'll tell you why in a minute. But yeah, go, go ahead. All right. So he's ninety four hundred bucks this week, uh, and I, I mentioned this earlier. The highest ranked Oklahoma State University player on tour, ahead of Mister Ricky, Mister Drop Him While He's Hot, Ricky Fowler, thirty uh, first in uh, uh, Victor Hovland is thirty first in the official World Golf Rankings. A P on the PGA Tour, he's eighth off the tee, eighth on approach, twelfth tee to green, twentieth shots gained total. I mean, that is some killer stats for a young guy like him. In terms of recent history. 48th at Memorial, not a great showing there. Third at Workday, 12th at Rocket, 12, 11th at Travelers, 21st at RBC, and 23rd at the Charles Schwab. So he didn't have a great Memorial, but uh, that was a tough course. He did have a good Workday, which was the week before. He's just playing a lot. He's rested now, and uh, I don't see how you can go away from this guy. I think this guy's going to break the curse of the uh, Puerto Rican Open, even though I have a bet saying the other guy's going to break it. Uh, I, I was about uh, to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're, you're yeah. awful, uh, awful wishy-washy here, big guy. No, 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 no. no. But uh, I think, uh, no, he's a great player, and uh, I think he's going to play great this week. Uh, yeah, I, th- there's, I mean, there's no reason that uh, not to pick that guy. I, I guess uh, the reason that I didn't go that route is, um, uh, I mean, you, you said it, right? I mean, he has been just hammered down since uh, last week was his first week off. And, and I, you could tell kind of coming in, but but the yeah. memorial was not nice to a lot of people, right? Yeah. So, so that's, you know, I, I don't know if that's, you can really look at that or not. Uh, you can, but I, you know, I don't know if it's necessarily fair. So, you know, I think, um, uh, I think it's a good, that, that's a strong pick, man. No, no reason, uh, no reason to steer away from that guy. So some guys I really liked here that I just, I just couldn't, I just pull, I put, I picked Victor just because of the way he's been, been hitting the ball. I like the way he's been hitting the ball. He's like, he's in the top of the field, like every week, like I just said, but I mean, you got right here next to him, you got Colin Morikawa and Daniel Berger who are both really good as well i mean berger's won this thing a couple times before i didn't like the way berger played recently i think i picked him somewhere i forgot where it was and he burned me and i was like damn gosh so uh, you know he he's this is his kind of field but i just didn't feel good picking him here uh i'm not i'm not saying fade him i'm not saying that at all i'm just saying i had to prioritize and i picked victor over him there but um well DJ, I, I, go ahead yeah, I, I think with Berger, it's like, you know, it's just one of those. I mean, it's it's a gut feeling there for me. I mean, he's won here twice. Yeah. Uh, he's won he's won once this uh, since the comeback. Right. And yeah. I, I it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I, I just, you know, horses for courses. Absolutely. 
But it's I don't know to see say he had back to back wins and he's going to come back uh, you know a year after the you know the the miss and he's going to win again. I, that's a stretch for me, man. Yeah, that, that's a stretch. <clears throat> I think he'll play well. I do think he'll play well. I just had to prioritize. And then DJ, he's right there too. He's at ninety three hundred bucks. But I just, I right now, I don't know if the back is something that's truly there. And I just can't take a risk on that. He burned me last week because I had him in one of my the lineup I missed. I had him in one of my lineups, and you know, he Jets out of here on Thursday afternoon. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> well, that yeah. sucks. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yep. Uh, all right. So I'm going. Uh, how much was he again? Uh, who, uh, Hovland was 9,400. 94. All right. Yeah. Um, so I'm dropping down after the 9,000. Is anybody else you want to hit the, in that, uh, above I 9, do have, um, so I had had, no, uh, yeah, I do. I have uh, Tony Fino at 9,100. Of course you do. You are a sucker, man. I cannot believe you. Uh, Finau, 16th in the official world golf rankings, finished 27th here last year. Uh, on the PGA Tour this this uh, this season, 14th on approach, 11th tee to green. Uh, recent events, third at the 3M, eighth at Memorial, which Memorial was tough. We know he slipped in the weekend, but eighth at Memorial is a strong freaking finish for that course. 53rd at Rocket, 69th at Travelers, or 33 at RBC, and 23rd at Charles Schwab. So he's trending in the right direction, right? So his last two tournaments he's played, he had the third at 3M, and he had the eighth at Memorial. I like the way he's striking the ball. Uh, he led the field last week at the 3M on approach, which is going to be key this week. And then he was fourth last week over in the, over the field in tee to green. So fired his caddy, and he's ready to fire. He's ready to fire that Puerto Rico curse. Well, it's not only is he ready to do that. I mean, he's ready to um, he's ready to hire a new caddy. Uh, <laughs> hey, Finau's like going. I played my ass off. Here I am, and you won't even pair me with Jordan Spieth. Why not? Why not? tell you i tell you hey uh, I, I, I know why <laughs> but no he's been striking the ball really well though you can't uh, yes yeah he, 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 yeah, he, yeah. he has been for sure yeah uh all right so i got uh so i'm dropping down from nine thousand. so i'm picking up uh billy ho man billy horschel at 8500 dollars uh okay. I, I i like billy here um i think uh he, you know so he's got strokes everything you know he's kind of flat across the board as far as strokes gain so he's kind of even, except for putting, and he's a, got a stroke game putting. Um, I like what I've seen out of him over the past. Uh, uh, where was he? He's got uh, T seven at the workday, T thirteen at Memorial, and and here's the thing, right? I mean, he's kind of. I mean, Billy Ho's kind of sneaky good out there, man. I mean, he's he just he's out there and he's playing. Uh, he's top uh, top twenty five in strokes gained um, total. Uh, and strokes gained off the tee. So he finished T9 here last year. So, uh, you know, for the price, uh, you know, I like him. And, and he, once again, I think he's going to be, uh, I think he's kind of a sleeper. I, I don't think he's going to be, uh, get a lot of play from people. So uh, I think we've, uh, I'm going to kind of, kind of pulling him just because uh, I, I don't think he's going to be in a lot of lineups. Pat's going to write you and say, why don't you pick me? I don't know, Pat. <laughs> Show me, show me something this week, Pat, and uh, I got, I got you next week, buddy. <laughs> uh, Pat hasn't, he just hasn't been closing lately. I mean, I just, I didn't like what I saw recently. Um, you know, I mean, he's a great player, so I mean, he can turn it around. It's been gone for a week or so. So Woodland, same thing. Just uh, he got the, he's got the new driver. We'll see how that goes this week. Um, Billy's a good pick. I mean, Abe did not, uh, he did not do well for us uh, a couple of weeks ago. Just didn't really, didn't do well, right? Um, Speed uh, is kind of been just up and down if you're looking for a train wreck just you know <laughs> watch the featured groups on thursday and friday good. yeah absolutely um so yeah so that's a good pick man it's a good pick so my next one and uh you'll see a trend here i'm going with all these young rookies that have hit the ball really well Not a bad you didn't strategy. wait a minute you're sending me the wolf why didn't you say so? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for the Wolfman. Um, finished 24th here last year. Uh, third round, he shot a 65. He showed improvement. Um, just recent history with Matt Wolf, 12th at 3M last week. Um, to me, he didn't really seem like he was, I mean, he was trying, of course, but he wasn't really in that much of a contention, and he was, was kind of cruising there. And I think he's probably saving some energy for this week when the, the big boys came back. 22nd Memorial, which is a good strong finish there considering how tough that course was. Did not play good at the workday. 
but he was coming off of that that rocket mortgage where he finished second and had that really heartbreaking finish there. Uh, so I just like the way this guy's been trending. If you look at these tournaments where he's kind of put the, the effort in, second at Rocket, 22nd at Memorial, and then 12th last week at the 3M, striking the ball really well. And when I saw the price, I was like, 7900 bucks for Matt Wolf. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of disrespectful if you ask me. I think with the way that guy's been playing, I see a lot of value there. If you look at his PGA, uh, where he's at, he's 15th off the tee, um, but he's just got to get the irons right. But then last week, he gained four shots on approach and then five shots putting for the week. So, I mean, he is getting some consistency there. Uh, I just think at that price, you get, it's kind of hard to pass this guy up. I like the game. Yeah, yep. Can't, can't argue with you there, man. That's... Uh... Uh, oh, bandwagon boy. Next thing you know, you have Ricky Fowler in your, uh, your lineup. <laughs> Next up, Ricky Fowler. No. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, you know, that's the thing. Look at that. I mean, Matt Wolf has been playing lights out lately, and he's 7900 bucks on uh, on DraftKings. And then you got Ricky Fowler. Fowler at uh, 80, 88, 8300 bucks. Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll probably eat these words in Thursday and Friday. And, you know, Matt Wolf will be in last place, and Ricky Fowler will be leading. <laughs> you you want to you want to go ahead and take i'll take that action i'll take that action if you want to put it out there i will take that send in the wolf you send in the wolf all, huh? all day long uh all right so i'm uh i'm going uh viva la mexico oh are you i am i am abe abe, abe is going to turn oh, you're around taking this. answer I'm, I'm taking answer i'm taking answer man he and here he's uh he's 14th in strokes gained total um and i i think and he's he's not he's not negative in any field um and uh he's you know putting is okay putting's okay uh his worst category is strokes gained around the green and it's still not bad it's just flat so yeah. so i think that you know where he's going to wind up at is hit fairways and l- rely on your ball striking and, and I, I think we got something there. So I, I'm like an answer for a top 10. Uh, oh, for wow. The, for, the, for the week. Yeah, yeah. I like him at, at a top 10. I'm telling you what, man. I don't know what they're smoking out in Oklahoma, but those guys are churning out some damn golfers. They are. I, I, they mean, are. We, we, I mean, we've named, we, we've talked about four or five mm-hmm. uh, Oklahoma. I mean, though, they, I don't know what they're doing. Maybe I should have. I mean, is it too late for no, me doing that? No, not too late. No, no. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll, I'll understand if you leave right now. Yeah, I need to get, I, I bet you will. <laughs> uh, somebody must somebody must have sent you a letter. Uh, yeah, so I'm going Abe. He's 8,400 bucks, and uh, again, it's all it's ball striking and uh, 14 strokes gained. I, I'm uh, and he he is gonna turn it around. I I sincerely believe that he is striking. He's he is too good of a ball striker uh, for it not to happen. So, so yeah, there you go. All right, that's good. That's good. All right, De- so, definitely going to throw back a few uh, margaritas in his honor you, this weekend. Do you have two left? Or you have one. Left? Uh, I got two left. Okay, I'll go next. Uh, when's your? What's your next one at? Uh, what price point? Uh, I'm I'm dropping down to uh, six thousand dollar range next. Okay, I got one left in the seven. So I got Kevin Kisner. Um, mm. Yeah, I like the way he played uh, recently. Uh, let me get my notes up here. Uh, he's cheap this week, man. Seven thousand bucks for kids, I think, is pretty cheap. I mean, him and Matt Wolf are both cheap. I thought. Yeah. So um, finished twenty seventh here last year. Uh, he had a bad round one with a seventy seven, and then the rest of the rounds were all in the mid sixties at this course. So it's going to play similar to the way it was last year, right? So I think he can play really well here. And the game has been looking a lot better recently. Uh, he missed the cut of Memorial, tough course, not similar to what we're going to see this week. He was third at Rocket, and uh, that was where I really saw him kind of starting to get that game turned around. And I know it's like, hey, you know, he had 126 at Travelers, third at Rocket, and then missed Memorial. I just think I, I liked what I saw at Rocket. Memorial was a really tough course where you see Mickelson laying up on a par three. So it just tells you how weird that course it was that week. Um, Jack did a great job of throwing these guys some curveballs. But um, this guy, and he was 29th at the Charles Schwab. So, uh, you know, I, just, I like what I saw. Um, at Rocket, he shot a 66 on Sunday. Just, you know, I'm going to take a chance on him. At this price, I thought, uh, hey, you know what? I, I like the game I saw recently. And, um, Memorial was just a beast of a course, man. So uh, I got all the faith the kids can turn us around. Again, especially with that, you know, 27th finish here last year. He can play his course well. For, for that price, he's good. Yeah. 
No, I, I actually had him in, in the lineup. I, I was trying to kind of get it worked out, and I just uh, – with, with the other guys that I picked, and you know, uh, I, I just couldn't get the pricing-wise. I, I couldn't get it. Uh, it was cheap. It was so. cheap. So no, no, it, bucks, yeah. Well, I know, but that, you know, you just asked the question. I mean, I've dropped down to the $6,000 range for the last two picks. So, yeah. 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 I, w- I wouldn't be surprised to see him at like, you know, 7900 8300 I mean, sometimes, you know. So, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, okay. So, so here's where I got, got really squirrely and, and I, I was down, you know, with, uh, and I, I looked and kind of shuffled some things around. I, uh, I, I wanted Simpson, but you know what? I, I, I just, I've got, and I think Simpson's going to do well. I've got him in another lineup. Uh, but in this one, I, I wanted McElroy and that's kind of what threw me over the top. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so I went, uh, I, for my next pick, fifth pick, the birdies and bourbon, just drafting draft sixty six hundred dollars i went for the sheriff oh did you oh did i did, you? I, did. <laughs> I mean listen he's gonna make the cut no doubt he may lay up on some par threes he's good <laughs> that, that's fine well, there's none long enough there's none long enough so and and here's the thing the course isn't that long right now i'll give you uh you know he he off the off the tee that's that's where you know he he hates the hey, it's he hates to hit a fairway. He's like, oh, it's wow. like if I'm over fifty percent fairways hit this week, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> so, but I think that this course, it, I think it's going to rein him back a little bit. And I know people are probably going, "You're crazy as hell." Hey, hey, nothing right. I mean, that man is fifty years old and he's almost lost his mind. He's moving to Florida for crying out loud. <laughs> he's, he's moving to Sunshine Village. It's like, hey, it's fine. Uh. I think I think it's actually going to rein him in a little bit. Uh, his putting does scare me. But I, I think that uh, I, I think he's going to be in a lot of position to hit some of those little flip wedges, and I'm I'm expecting uh, you know some hole outs, and uh, I'm I'm think I'm I'm going just with some crazy stuff out of Phil uh, that you know that he's known for, right? I mean I, I think that's uh, I think that's where he's going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this is going to look. Uh, I mean, it's it's going to be greenside, right? And and I think that that's going to be so. The same way Abe is not good around the greens, Phil is always going to be good yeah, around the greens. That's and the game. Yeah. What is he's ranks eleventh uh, in strokes gained around the green, mm-hmm. and and I think that's going to be key uh, here. And uh, what's he got? He's got a T two here in twenty sixteen. So he's he, you know he's he's played the course pretty good all in all. And I needed somebody in the six thousand dollar range, and uh, you know the other ones. I'm like, eh, you know. And so if I'm going to gamble, I'm going to gamble with somebody that I know can work around the greens, and that's what Phil's going to. And I mean, <clears throat> the, the glasses, the glasses may be wearing on me. Oh, here we go. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. The, the, the glasses, the glasses may be wearing on me. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh everybody uh, anyway yeah so you had some choices right there i mean that's 6600 bucks you know there's some guys i like right there i mean phil's one of them i like phil of course uh and i was just picking on about the, the laying up thing i, I hope think. he wears those tight pants again though i hope he does too <laughs> um but brendan todd was right there and then shane lowry so brendan todd i mean he, he was lights out a couple of weeks ago i'm surprised yeah. you didn't go that route the, the pizza man uh and then <laughs> And then, and then Shane Lowry. I mean, obviously he's had a little bit of struggle coming back here. You know, I haven't liked exactly why I've been seeing, which is why he's down there. But, but you had some. You had to, and then the other one, uh, Weisberger. Right, there. Weisberger is a, yeah. he's a good player, man. Well, it's, but so again, here's why. I mean, just in looking at those at those folks, you know, and and uh, who uh, Ryan Palmer, I think. Well, he was like maybe the sevens, but I mean, I could have fudged around and made it work. But in the, you know, to get the guy who got next. So anyway, I just the. There's a lot of it. A lot of people are playing well in that in that six thousand dollar range. Yeah, but they're they're just as apt to blow up as Phil is. Yeah. So so I went with hey, at least if he's in trouble, he's got the game to be able to <laughs> at least to try to save himself. Right? Oh, Some he's going to be in trouble. <laughs> I, I <know. laughs> you want you want to go over under fifty uh, greens, fifty uh, percent? I'm sorry, uh, uh, fairways in regulation, fifty uh, percent accuracy. You, well, that's you where, he, and I'm not picking on him. That's where he shines. <laughs> I know. Exactly. I know. No, it's like don't hit the fairway, Phil. Don't hit the fairway. Oh my god! Uh, all right, what? Uh, who, who you got next? You know, Weisberger is number 29th in the world in the official world golf rankings. Did you know that? I did not. Yeah, 
And then, and then, but they, but yet they've got uh, Spieth and uh, well, nobody knew who Weis, Weisberger is. So they're yeah. like, who? who? Yeah, well, he doesn't he doesn't play a whole lot here. He doesn't play a whole lot here. But yeah, he's he's a really good player. He's just a really good player. Uh, my last one is um, Streelman. So um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, he's at uh, sixty nine hundred bucks. He, um, I've been playing a bunch lately, and he's been playing really well. Uh, so if you look at him uh, at Memorial, he was fifty fourth again. Really tough course. But then he was seventh at Workday. He was second at Travelers. Um, he was, uh, and that was that was pretty much it. But you know, RBC was 90th and 80th at Charles Schwab. But the, you know, the Travelers and the Workday were two of the the tournaments last before the Memorial. And I just liked the way he's been playing. Liked the way he's been striking the ball. And uh, he took last week off, so he's gonna be rested. Um, this guy, he's guys really good. And um, at that price, yeah, he's he's a uh, he'll. he'll well, there's no cut to make, but but he'll uh, <laughs> but he'll uh, he'll strike the ball well. Um, you know, if there are the uh, 20 events here, it's showing um, you know uh, off the tee again. Uh, you know, half a shot gain there. Tee to green, another half a shot gain there. You know, he's not the kind of guy that's going to pop out at you when you look at the the shots gained, but he yeah. seems to always strike the ball well. And uh, when he's rested, and since the break, he's been playing really well. So yeah, there he is. All right, man. So here we go. Uh, oh, Canada. Oh, boy. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm rolling Nick Taylor on this one, man. Oh, so, nice, so, nice. So, you know, looking through. Uh, so I'm in the I'm in the bargain basement here just because of my, you know, I'm, I'm with. Did you uh, have, you know, oh, because you had to play Rory. <laughs> I, 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 went, I went with the luck of the Irish here. Oh, boy. Uh, so here's the deal. Um, you know, find another guy in the bargain basement that's had a win this year. And uh, I couldn't. Maybe there is. Maybe I overlooked it. But Nick Taylor won at Pebble Beach. Thirty mm. uh, second in FedEx Cup rankings, and the dude is accurate off the tee. So for the exact reason that I'm picking him is exactly the reason I didn't pick Phil or did pick Phil Mickelson. So, uh, so complete opposites. But uh, I, you know, I, I he's going to be good off the tee. He's going to hit fairways, and uh, and he's got to win. So you know, there there's there's got to be some confidence coming in there. And at sixty one hundred dollars, uh, I couldn't find anybody else that was going to uh, going to be better. So you know, if if you know, pick him or you know, reshuffle the deck. And I was so stressed out in this one. I, I'm like, nah, shit. I'm just picking him, man. I am not going back. I'm not reloading another one. I'm picking him. I'm sticking with it. So. Um, Good hey, pick, yeah. here, here's to, uh, here's to Nick Taylor. He already made the cut. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's good. Um, and I like I like the way he's been playing recently. So yeah, it's a good pick. Good pick. All right. So who do you, who do you have? Uh, do you have anybody as an outright that you're looking at here? Um, oh, you know, uh, oddly enough, uh, I don't have him in this lineup. Uh, I do have him in another one. Uh, you've got one of the guys and, and I'll pick one. Uh, well, it's, it, it, I think, so there's three people I like. I like, uh, Webb <clears throat> Simpson. I've got him yeah. in, a, in, the, in another lineup. I, yeah. I really like Webb. This is a par 70 course. And I, I think that he is, I, I think that he, I just went with a different strategy than the other one. You know, I kind of picked kind of middle of the road instead of the, you know, the, the studs and duds. So, yeah. um, this is my studs and duds field. So I, I went Webb. So I think Webb has a really good chance. He's, he's mm-hmm. had, had some time off. Yep. Par 70, Bermuda Greens. I mean, there's n- absolutely nothing that I don't like about this course for Webb Simpson. Um, the other guy, Victor Hovland, you've got him in your lineup. I, I yep. think, I mean, I think that, I think Hovland is playing too good a golf that he, he's just going to get lucky and win one. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it is it, this year. It, he's going to win a tournament. This, well, Excuse me. He's going to win another tournament this year, and he and he, he is going to be the one to break the curse. It is not going to be. Finau is not a closer. It's not going to be him. So mm. Vic's going to do it, and I, I think this course sets up well for him, as good as he's striking the ball. So I think that if you've got Vic in your lineup, that is not a bad move whatsoever. Um, the other guy that I like that that I think that, that that benefits him this week because he doesn't have to worry about that one blow up round, and that's the X Man. And, and that's really, I think that's what's kept Xander. So what Xander should have, Z, uh, hold on, Xander could have won in Colonial. Uh, mm-hmm. So could, yeah. so could Morikawa, or at least could have, you know, but he didn't. And, and again, I think that every tournament that Xander's played in, he's had that one bad round and he just couldn't catch up with everybody else. Because like there, I mean, 
the the level of golf that we're seeing played right now <clears throat> is damn good. Yeah, and, and it and it's not the uh, I'm not to say that they aren't the you know marquee names, but I mean you know prior to this year, it, you know if you're just not a complete golf nerd and you say hey uh, tell me something about Daniel Berger and it's like uh, the baseball player yeah yeah I don't, well, I, God I bet Brooks wishes that when they say hey tell me something about Brooks Kepka I bet he wishes somebody say oh my God he's the best baseball player out there oh, sorry yeah. Brooksy. Uh, oh, yeah. but, I mean, but there's a lot of these guys that you just, you, you would, I mean, it's Michael Thompson, right? I mean, give me, give me a fun factoid about Michael Thompson. Don't, because I don't want you, I don't want to put you on the spot, <laughs> but I'm just saying you've got some damn good golf. And I mean, and yeah. you've seen what every single tournament that we've played so far has been high teens or low twenties for the finishes. Right. So, yeah. I mean, you, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, if you're not shooting four or 500 a day, man, you, you can just, get, you know, Hey, enjoy uh, sitting in the middle of the pack. Cause you're not going to make it. And I think that's where Xander, he's just had that one bad round of tournament. So, so he's not going to have to worry about that as far as making the cut goes. Um, so I'm, I actually like Xander to, I'm going to go with Xander for the outright. <clears throat> that's a good pick. It's a good pick. Uh, I would not, uh, he's been playing well lately too. So, I mean, yeah. you know, like I said, like you said, you know, I mean, kind of hard to argue with that. I mean, the guy is, yeah, I mean, yeah. All right. Uh, so for my outright, I, I'm probably going to say, uh, I'm going to take Vic, man. I think Vic can pull this thing off. I do. I think that guy has just been playing so good. He's got the week off and he's rested and he's ready to break out. Much like you said, he's ready to break out. And, um, He's going to win. He is going to win with the big boys. He's going to win one with the yeah, big boys. Yeah. Oh, and know. by the way, by the way, I want, I don't, I don't want no damn uh, Bacardi silver. Okay. I want, I want a good aged sipping rum. I, I don't, don't, mm. don't send me anything with a freaking bat on it. I'll, I will mm. send it back. I will send it back. I will send it back empty <laughs> and tell you to send me another one. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. So, all right. I, I like Vic, man. I mean, I, I just named him. I mean, I know I, she didn't kind of three, but if, I, but I didn't pick my right. If but. he survives, if he for, if he even survives the you know the third oh, the re, the, re, the Reed and Kepka. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Like, whoo, what? Imagine that. <laughs> I mean, I I can see Reed going with uh, going like nine iron to the grill, man, on on Kepka. Just uh, oh <laughs> just just God. shut him, just shut him down. Actually, Reed, Pat, if you're listening, go for the knee, buddy. Go for the knee. It's kind of weak <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Before, before, yeah. before we before we okay. drop, before we drop, because we've we've had some interesting things happen over the past, uh, and and we've we've hardly ragged on DJ. And so, oh, so really? we, so, oh, really? so no, yeah, I, thought yeah, I mean, were, we, uh, I thought you were at the beach dragging on him last week. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I can't. Hey, I can't tell you what we did at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> what, do, what do you think he had to miss that tournament, man? He had to, we, we had things to do, buddy. There are um, some DJ lovers out there, man. We got some. We got some. We got some feedback on that. <laughs> oh, and it wasn't necessarily positive. So, no. so there's been some interesting things happen. So you've got uh, you've got Kepka. He's not going to miss a cut. He's not going to have to fake miss a cut. Uh, but he could mm -hmm. withdraw due to due to a knee. You've got. Um, uh, you got DJ that that withdrew from a back. You know, it's like he hey, what, was he eight over, ten over, nine over. I don't know. It was a it's bunch, like right? I think it was eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So he so he misses. Um, you got right, yeah. uh, you you got Deschambeau that's like melting down because I mean, and you know, dude, all that's doing is fuel fueling everyone else just to get up in up in the uh, uh, Bison's grill. When he's out mm -hmm. there on the course, I mean, because they're just waiting for him to explode on him again. So, do you, are, are you picking any meltdowns this week? Like anybody to steer clear of because it is going to be like a train wreck. I think that's more did, next did, week did, than this week. Did, did I just name all three of them? <laughs> yeah, you did. You did, but I think that's next week. Oh, I yeah. think next next week's the meltdown. So, if like I think you told me it was either on air or off air. And we'll go over this next week as well. But if Brooks does not place in the top ten next week, there's a meltdown. There's a meltdown. Oh yeah. At, at the first major back, the PGA, uh, over there in San Francisco. If he misses the cut at the San Francisco, sound the alarm. Claude Hunt's fired. <laughs> you know, it's 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 all it's they're gonna burn the ships. You know. Oh uh, so. yeah. I'll have to let Tattersall know. Uh, you yeah. know, it's uh, hey yeah. hey Claude, I'm looking for a swing coach, man. Hit, hit, hit us, DM us, DM us. <laughs> oh man, but right, I mean, come on, that game has not been good. They've been relying on the knee and this and that. And I don't doubt the knee is there, but it's more. We talked, you and I talked about this a couple of days ago. It's more mental than anything. 
But he's Mr. Major, Mr. Major, Mr. Major. Here he is, defending champion. So if he doesn't play well this week, okay. If he finishes outside the top 10 at a major, that's two weeks in a row where what happened to Brooks? What happened to Brooks? Press everywhere. He's going down to Florida in his tanning bed just sweating. Sweat it out, man. Sweat it out. <laughs> hey, he, he's got, so, so, so what you're saying is if he doesn't make the FedEx playoffs, he's going to show. So what, uh, what's uh, DeChambeau up to, like 240? So he's going to show up to the 2021 season at like 260? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so here, well, here's what would throw the golf universe into a tizzy is if, is if Bryson wins this week. Oof. Mm. Uh, yeah, it, it would. And, and you know what? I mean, think about, um, so Memorial, uh, tight, got to hit fairways. Uh, we're, so the week before, uh, Connecticut got to hit fairways. I mean, so he's playing these challenging courses where it's yeah. like ball strikers, not about distance. And he's actually, he's owning it, man. I mean, he's, he's outside of his last tournament, but I mean, he's playing really well. So I, I yeah, I, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me to see, I, well, it would surprise me to see him win. It won't surprise me to see him to, uh, to, to play well. Uh, I mean, I would say it's a fair top 10. I, I don't think he's got a win coming though. I, I think that, Especially with uh, they're they're gonna have a camera on him. He's in a feature group, and he's probably like, "Damn it, I didn't want to be in a feature group. That means the camera is <laughs> gonna be all over me." <laughs> well, did you know that? You, here's the thing about, about uh, Bryson, though. He made his PGA Tour debut as an amateur in 2015, in June 2015, at the FedEx St. Jude Classic near Memphis, and he placed 45th. Um, so, I mean, he he's got some history here, and um, yeah. Yeah, I don't <laughs> it'd be interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, we, sh- we shall see. Uh, looking forward to the uh, golf match on the uh, the charity challenge on Wednesday. Uh, no, you know, it's, uh, and I guess nobody's mentioned Stinson because it's his first trip back, and you see how Fleetwood performed last week. So, uh, but yeah, Fleetwood's in this week. I mean, he could, uh, you know, did he, did he knock the rest off last week? I don't know. I don't think so, but I mean, maybe, I mean, you know, it's, uh, I, I think that it's just crazy, man, about how you've got people that you would have never heard of or never seen, and they're just coming from everywhere and nobody's talking about them. Nobody's yeah. giving them any press. Nobody's yeah. giving them any attention. I mean, it's all about everybody's just really, you know, hammering on these uh these issues and challenges and it's the one time you could take something and turn it into a positive uh they're just and and i mean people can say we do the same thing but it, you know it, it's not to be negative i mean it is entertainment value but you know i think the uh the true mainstream media it, it is definitely not a positive spin that they're putting out there so i i hope that changes and they get their shit together and uh you know come 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 back with a little uh i hope they refocus and and recenter whatever their strategy is. I hope it changes. I, I do too. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, though, what I'm really interesting really interested in is this world golf ranking number one with the changing of the guards, you know, uh, over there at uh, Memorial. And if we have more of that shuffling going on now, because we got a major coming up, we got uh, we got this week here at the the challenge, you know, and it's just. Uh, that's be, that'd be fun. It's fun to talk about that. It's fun to see people really striving to be able to get that. Yeah. You know, Rory had it for a while, and if John can't keep it for three weeks, none of the last six months, it's going to be interesting to see. I, I love that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Well, I think love about seeing this, these guys man. battle it out. Think about, hey, all, all it takes is for Webb Simpson to get a win, mm. and and you've just, hey, and it, it, they're reshuffling the deck again, man. I mean, these yeah. people are neck and neck. I mean, there's, yeah. a, there, there, there's a lot of uh, competitive juices flowing right now and, and things could shuffle really, really fast. I mean, JT gets a win. I think he goes to number one. I mean, you've got a handful of people that all it takes is a win and, uh, and they're, yep, they're jumping right. right up there, man. I mean, it's, uh, it, it could get very interesting as things, uh, as things progress. So what do we got coming up this week, Cal on the pod? Uh, let's see. Uh, so Tuesday, uh, I guess we'll drop it. Uh, we'll probably drop it later in the week. So we got, uh, Scott Watkins, uh, golf, 
out of uh, Papago uh, Golf Club in Arizona coming on. So golf instructor. Uh, if you haven't checked him out, go go uh, you find him on Instagram. I think it's Scott Watkins underscore golf on Instagram. We'll, we'll fill you in on the pod, but uh, yeah. should be a great conversation. Uh, if, if you haven't gone out and listened, uh, so Madamski at uh, the GM at Sweetens Cove, um, we had him on last night. I think we've dropped a few things. Uh, I think, did we drop the pod yet? I believe yeah, we did. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah we so had to get that out for the charity thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so we dropped the pod for uh, for the uh, Folds of Honor event that he was doing today. He uh, was sun up to sundown. How many holes could he get in? Uh, donation. So if you haven't donated to uh, Folds of Honor, uh, hit up Sweetens Cove on Instagram and feel free to donate. Uh, I haven't checked this afternoon, but at, at noon ish, uh, you should send him some kind of recovery pack, by the way, <laughs> I, I definitely, I definitely need to send that man some bourbon. Uh, but, uh, let's see. So I think he was like 150 holes around noon and that gives him like, uh, what, six or seven hours of daylight still. So I think the course record was set at the, uh, battle of the sun earlier this year by uh by coach and uh, i think he was like 252 252 holes Mm -hmm. and so if he was at 150 by noon he definitely has enough time to do it can he hold up can he hold up to get another 103 holes in i don't know he sounded good last night he sounded strong i've watched him a little bit on insta today Look good out there. They did have a hell of a rainstorm that came through, which is not unusual for that uh, for Tennessee that time of year. But we're hoping to get him on later in the week, so we should have another recording with uh, with Matt and Sweetens Cove on okay. uh, kind of a debrief on how uh, how the charity event went. And uh, maybe I don't know if we're recording. <laughs> hey, these guys, these boys, and I'm going on this golf trip with. I'm like, hey guys, can we get on a can we get on a pod and do a little recording? And I'm out of town. I can't do it. I'm like, dude. It's 30 friggin' minutes. Just hold the phone up to your ear. <laughs> and, and these are the guys that I'm paired with, right? So I'm going, boy, this is a winning team. <laughs> oh, I know. They, they don't have any time for us yet. Uh, Matt yesterday was recording from the shed. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, he, and he tomorrow, it's like I'm waking up at 4 in the morning, and I'm going to go try and play 253 holes of golf. But sure, i got 40 minutes for you. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's like, Jesus, man. It's like, oh, I'm out of time. But I'm on vacation. It's like, dude, it's not work. It's fun. We're just having a good time. I, I don't understand. I don't understand. However, the attorney did respond back and said, sounds like fun. Oh, good. Oh, so good. so it, would, it may be like a party of two. Okay. So that's good. Yeah, we'll have them on later in the week. And should I be offended by all the golf coaches that you're bringing on? It feels like, it feels like you're trying to tell me something about my game. Like, you know, hey, Dan needs more help and <sighs> – you know. Well, I could start with uh, you should be listening more when they're talking. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would help. That would help. <laughs> Why, what are all these quizzes you keep sending me? Yeah, exactly. If you don't get 100%, you can't co-host. <laughs> exactly. And, and you hit what club? No, no, Dan, you don't hit driver from 150 yards out. No, Dan, you can't uh, tee it up in the fairway. No, that, that's, not, that's not correct. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's all good. Uh, yeah, we've got some great guests coming up, guys. We're having a ton of fun. Be sure to, if you like the video and you're still um, out there, just make sure you like the video, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. And um, if hey, you didn't we like, if you didn't like the things we said about DJ, you can leave. Hey, if you don't like it, tell us why you didn't like it. I mean, we, we could clean our act up. I'm not saying yeah. we will, but we could. We could. We could just leave a comment. Don't don't leave the don't leave the thumbs down. Leave a comment. And just let us know you didn't like the comment. Anyway, but anyway, we are excited about Memphis. This is going to be a fun a fun tournament and uh, stoked about this field. But uh, anyway, until next time, we're uh, going to sign off. Say cheers. Cheers. <laughs>